Hello everyone. My name is Rishabh Shandal. So today we are going to start our Hazelcast tutorial. Hazelcast is an open source in memory data grid. This is uh, this is a solution which we use to store our data in memory. In memory means physical memory. Physical memory means systems RAM. The advantage of using Hazelcast is that the data access time of an application is very fast if if you store data in a database and if your application every time your application needs some data it fetch it fetches the data from the database in that case the application would be slow but if you are storing the database if you are storing the data in memory i mean in physical memory or in ram so in that case the access time of fetching the data from from ram into your application will be very fast so this storing of data in memory is is provided by hazelcast one other advantage of hazelcast is that it is very lightweight it just has a 1.7 mb of jar file which you can add to your project class path and then you can start developing in start developing your project and you can use hazelcast into your application if you're creating a maven project so in that case you just have to add a dependency and then you can start coding into hazelcast there are no other dependency that is that has to be used in case of hazelcast so today we will be creating a maven project and i'll show you how to how and what to add in pom.xml file before starting before we can start coding in hazelcast so let's get started first of all i'll just create a maven project i hope you all are clear with how to create a maven project so right now i'm just creating a maven project archetype i'm selecting is quick start let's say uh the group id i just give as hazelcast and the artifact id as i again give is hazelcast tutorial now i'll click on finish so our maven project with name hazelcast tutorial has been created let me just close all the existing java file so let me just first start let me first open the pom.xml file of this hazelcast tutorial project so this is our pom.xml because i have created a maven project before i can start using hazelcast in my project i will have to add some dependency in it so for doing that let me just go to google and let's let me just open maven repository now here i will search hazelcast now hazelcast basically has two types of uh, node one is member node and the other one is client node so if it it's not necessary to use hazelcast client in your application but if if you want you can do that as well so let me just first add the core dependency of hazelcast so the latest version is 3.12 i'll just click on it so this is what the dependency i'll have to add in my pom.xml i'll just uh, i'll just copy this from here and i'll paste it into my pom.xml file let let's also add that client hazelcast client dependency so i'll just go back i'll click on hazelcast client and i'll add this dependency as well in my pom.xml file i've just copied it and i'll paste it in my pom.xml file i'll save my file so now we have added our hazelcast dependent dependency in our pom.xml file so once we add the dependency in our pom.xml file some the hazelcast at the back end eclipse will start downloading the jar file and all the libraries which are related to all this dependency that we have just added 
now we'll just create a simple class file and we'll start coding so this is our package name and this is our this is a default application that is already present so let me just delete it we don't need it even if we let it stay there it's not going to create any problem but I'm just deleting it now I'll just create a simple class file I'll name it as demo and I'll just click on finish so this is our class file now we'll just start coding in first of all we'll have to create a instance of hazelgas so this is how we create a new instance of a hazelgas the name of our uh, of my instance is hz now this this some error we just have to import the some of the classes in our class some of the packages that we have to import so all the required packages have been imported now i'll click on save so uh, i have created a hazelcast instance in my program now using this instance i will create a create an imap so let's create an imap with integer as key and string as value name of uh, my map would be imap and I'll just use that instance hz dot get map and here I will give my map name I'll give any name so what this hz, hz dot get map will do if a map with my map with name my map exists in hazelcast in memory in that case it will just fetch the instance of that map existing map but if this my map doesn't exist in memory in that case the hazelcast will create a new imap and return the instance of that map i will have to import this package so our map has been created now i'll just put some values in that map i'll just put five values in that map and once we have inserted some of the values in our map we'll just print some of the we'll just print the values which are present in our map for that i will again write a for loop so this entry set with the help of this entry set we will just traverse the map and we will print all the key and the values that are present in the map so basically the constructor of this method this yeah this is basically a method and it accepts a parameter a config parameter so if you want to create a hazelcast instance with us with some specific configuration so in that case we will have to pass the config object but right now i'm just creating a hazelcast instance with default configuration that is why i'm passing null in later examples i'll show how to how to customize the configuration of our hazelcast instance and then how to pass the configuration object into hazelcast and create a hazelcast instance with our own customized configuration but in this first example i'm just creating a simple hazelcast instance with default configuration then i'm using that instance to create a map which is my map thereafter i'm just using a for loop and i'm putting five values in our map and then we are just iterating the map and we are just printing what all key and values are present in our map let me just so this is our program now let me just run this program we'll run as java application so the program has done whatever it was supposed to do so whenever we run our program a new node is being created and here you can see the the details of our node that has just been created so this basically shows that right now we have just one member in our cluster size is one and uh, this is the member detail the ip address of our cluster node and the port number of our cluster node we have just run a simple application right now so we just have one node running at, at that time in this cluster 
and this node would be the parent node now here you can see that we have inserted five values so we are just printing all those key and values in our key and values here so this is the first node of our cluster now let's run the same program again so what it will do it will a new a second node would be created and that second node and first node using multicast addressing using multicast communication would communicate and uh, they will create a cluster with two nodes so let me just run this application again so we ran the application again let me just create one more console so in that case it will be clear so I've created two console view let me just so we have two instance of the same application running let me just pin the first console with the first instance and second instance with the second console so this is our first instance and this is the instance that we have just create just uh, ran so again you can see that since this was the second member the Hazelcast has found that now we have so both these members interacted with each other using that mem multicast and Hazelcast found out that now the cluster has two members and its size is two and these are the members so basically I am running it on same machine so the same machine and same network so the IP address is same but the port numbers are different and again this in this node in the cluster has also done the same thing because the code of our application is same also you can see that the first member has the first member also got the information that now we have two members in our cluster whose IPs are same but whose ports are different and the ports will keep on incrementing by one whenever you create a new node so right so now we have two nodes in our cluster and these two nodes would share the data and would share the data which are present in memory for example we have created the we have created a map my map in hazelcast so this my map is present in hazelcast memory i mean in physical memory so this my map would be shared between these two these two nodes this first node and this second node if i again run a run this program the third time in that case a third node would be created and that third node will join this cluster and again it will do the same thing that has been written in a program let me just run a third node let me just run this application the third time and it will create a third node and then we will have three nodes in our cluster let me again create a new console view and pin the third node here so this is our third node now you can see that this has been updated the size is 3 and these are the three nodes with same IPs but different ports and these are the values that has been inserted by the third node as well so these are all the three nodes so this is how we create a cluster in case of Hazelcast and then we can proceed with the development of our application so if you are developing a big project in that case we mainly use it to we mainly use hazelcast to store the state of our objects so we store the objects in hazelcast in hazelcast and that store is basic that's uh, object is basically being shared by all the nodes that is running that application so in that case whatever changes that is being made by one node would be shared among all other nodes so this so this is basically a simple application where we have created a simple program using hazelcast and we have created a cluster of three members and all three members are 
sharing this my map map and putting some data in the my map so that's all for this this video we'll cover we'll cover the other topics other yeah other topics and various other topics of hazelcast because hazelcast is quite complex i mean there are so many concepts in hazelcast that has to be understood so we'll cover all these things in other videos that's all for this video thank you